Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. We are going to continue with our unit 2 chemistry calculations and actually we are going to talk about double unit convergence today. So what it is and how do you work on these? Double units as the word suggests has two units and then we go through convergence one after the other. The simplest thing to remember is we write this double unit just like a simple fraction and then we begin converting either one either numerator or denominator till we get the desired one when once we are done with one unit we begin with the next unit and we continue and we finish till we get the desired answer so let's take an example here in this example we are converting 0.7 microgram per milliliters to grams per liter. So my road map becomes microgram per milliliter is equal to how much or how many rather grams per liters I have. So we are going to find out how can we go from microgram to gram and how can we go from milliliters to liters. So just following the directions which we have, we begin with the given which is 0.7 microgram per 1 milliliter. And now we can begin with either one. I always like to begin with the numerator. So I'm going to go from microgram to gram and if you remember our table in the previous video, we can just go and complete that into one step. So if I do microgram, I can jump over and go to grams. And the coefficients will be 1 microgram equals, this is the value which we get for gram. Micro is negative 6. So there we go. We already are done converting from microgram to gram because if we cancel this, we are left with grams. Now let's focus on our second unit which is milliliters. And we are going to go from milliliters to liters. So when you are converting milliliters to liters, remember we got 1 for milliliter and our table gave us the value 10 to negative third in the form of liters. Now if you imagine none of this was existing or this is like a fraction, you can cancel milliliter with milliliter. So look at the answer now you ended up having an answer grams per liter which is exactly what we desired to get. So now after we multiply all these numbers which are remaining there and then dividing by the denominator we end up getting the answer 7.0 10 to the 4 grams per liter. So look at that we completed our double conversion. Alright, here is another example. We are converting nanometers per day to centimeters per second. Now there are two conversions. We are going to go from nanometer to centimeters and from day to seconds. And these are not one step conversion. If you look at nanometer to centimeter, they both are prefix to prefix. So we need to go through our hub which is meters and from there we go to centimeter and then if it is day from day we go to hours from hours to minutes and minutes to seconds so we got a couple of steps there it's going to be a long conversion so I would recommend you to start with all the way from extreme left so that's my first number here and 1.023 turn to 7 uh, nanometers oh, it's hard to see there guys but you know what I'm writing I'm just writing that number and divided by 1 day now I'm going to convert nanometers first to centimeters but look at our own map it's nanometers to meters to centimeters so if I follow my road map which I have here I'm going to get exactly correct way my pathway to go to centimeters. Now zigzag I had to cancel nanometers so that comes here and I need to cancel meters. After we're done with this 
you can look at our magic table with the magic numbers or probably you figure out how it works by this time anything with the prefix is going to be one and that big chunk is going to go with the basic unit so nano is 10 to negative 9 that goes with meters centi is negative 2 so that goes here well if you look at cancelling the units we cancel nano we cancel meter and we are left with centimeter so we already achieved one conversion now second conversion is going from day to hours hours to minutes and minutes to second now imagine as if this was not existing and we are cancelling day so diagonally across we should have day here from day you are going to go to hours and from hours you are going to go to minutes and then from minutes of course you are going to go to seconds so when we start cancelling we are going to say okay this is one day and then one day is equal to 24 hours then one hour is equal to 60 minutes and one minute is equal to 60 seconds so if you look carefully now you can cancel day with the day you can cancel hours with hours minutes with minutes and you are left with the seconds here so your final answer comes out to be centimeters per second which is the desired answer which we have here the only thing we need to do is multiply all the numbers in numerator multiply all in denominator and divide both till you get the answer and i got the answer for this as 1.184 and 10 to the negative fifth centimeters per second so not that's difficult right it's quite easy so now moving on to pressure conversion first of all i want you to keep in mind that's the formula for pressure it is force divided by unit now pressure is atmosphere pressure and pressure could be also measured with the system for the experiment just to keep in mind barometer is the one which we use for measuring atmospheric pressure and manometer or manometer people call is the one measuring for which is used for measuring experimental pressure okay so moving on to pressure units now these are all different sorts of conversion units and they are given in your scientific chart it's a good idea to always remember those also so the first question is converting kilopascal to two and if you remember we already have those things right given here so it's going to be just simply one step conversion we are going to jump over from kilopascal to two and if you want to go cancel kilopascal diagonally across i should write kpa we begin with our given so that goes over here and for tor and kpa we select the values from the coefficients so that's 760 here for tor and for kilopascal we got 101.33 the next step is cancelling the common units and then multiply and get the answer in tor which i believe i got as 910 0.90 here is one more example how many millimeters of mercury are there in this pascal now keep in mind we don't have pascal there but we can go from pascal to kilo kilopascal and from kilopascal you can go to millimeters of mercury and then you already have the conversion factors with you so the road map goes from pascal kilopascal and millimeter of mercury we're going to begin with our given which is this value that comes right here so that is 1.159 10 to 4 
since we want to cancel Pascal, PA comes here and if you want to cancel kilopascal, the kilopascal comes diagonally across. Now coming to the unit, anything with kilo will be always 10 to the third. Remember kilo is 10 to the third, which means I am going to put this as 1 and this will be 10 to the third to go to the basic unit. When we come to the millimeter of mercury, in our equation we can see 760 is the coefficient and for kilopascal it is 101.3. Next step, we cancel the common units which we have and then we multiply and divide and we get the final answer as millimeters of mercury which I believe we got 86. 93 millimeter of mercury. So I hope this video helps you to understand the double conversion of units and also pressure convergence. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time in next video. Until then, bye!